so excited. We are celebrating the best day ever. I'm so excited you're joining me today because we are going to be looking at a story from Paul in Colossians chapter 1, verse 20, and also in John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. We are going to be looking at how God sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins so that we could have a relationship with him. Let's go ahead and check out our so-and-so story now. What happened to the rest of the bridge? We were almost done. Have you been eating the peeps? Mm -hmm. Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm Lawson. And Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. We are so glad you're hanging out with us on this very special day. We sure are. And now some interesting facts about Easter. Oh. Cool. I got a rope. Watch this. Boom. Uh -huh. Cool. 
All right, and you got the egg, a little <laughs> egg. Oh, jelly beans. Oh, fun. Okay, all right. Aha. All right, interesting Easter fact number one. Americans consume more than 16 billion jelly beans every year. That is actually enough jelly beans to circle the globe three times. That's a lot of jelly beans. Do you have any more facts? Do I have more facts? Brandon, I'm a facts machine. You're a facts machine? Forget it. Oh! oh. Whew. oh. Good catch. Thank you. Oh, okay, here we are. Interesting Easter fact number two. On April 1st, 2007, the largest ever Easter egg hunt had 9,753 children searching for 501,000 eggs. That's nuts. No, it was eggs. It's an egg hunt. It's right here. Interesting Easter fact number three. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! Bible story time with Kellen! Oh. Thank you. No! Ah! Ah! <laughs> hey guys, happy Easter to you both. Right back at you, Kellen. Happy Easter to you. I love Easter. Easter is so fun. I'm so glad today is Easter. What story are you telling, Kellen? Uh, Easter? Great. Okay. Before I tell you about Easter, I think it's best if I give you a little backstory. In fact, we should really start in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the earth and the sky, and, well, everything. He made a man named Adam and a woman named Eve. Hey, I'm Adam. Do you come here often? I'm Eve, and, uh, no, I just got here. Cool, me too. Adam and Eve lived peacefully in paradise with God until they made a very poor choice. You see, God had only given them one rule. Don't eat the fruit from a certain tree. But... Hey, let's eat from that tree. Once they broke God's rule, the world became broken, and sin separated people from God and broke their relationships with one another. There was no more peace. But God had a plan. Years later, God chose a man named Abraham. I'm old. Like really old. Like first generation iPod old. He was old. And even though he didn't have any children, God had promised Abraham that the whole world would be blessed through his descendants. The whole world? <laughs> Did he say descendants? So Abraham's wife Sarah had a Ooh. baby named Isaac. And Isaac grew up and had two babies. And then they grew up and had even more babies. Abraham's descendants grew and grew. And they became known as the Israelites, God's chosen people. But they still didn't have peace. They didn't have peace when the Israelites were taken as slaves in Egypt. Let my people go! And they didn't have peace when God chose Moses to lead people out of slavery. The Lord has parted the sea so we can escape Egypt. Follow me. They didn't have peace when God led them to the promised land. Where's the milk and honey? I thought it'd be bigger. I wish we had a king like the other nations. So God gave them a king. Hello. I am your king. Meh, I've seen better. We want a new God. <clears throat> Nothing brought God's people peace. But God wasn't finished yet. You see, hundreds of years later in the town of Bethlehem, a descendant of Abraham that would bless the whole world was about to be born. The baby's name was Jesus, and he would become a man who loved people deeply and he would show us how to love people the way he did. So Jesus loves us so much that he gave his life on a cross to pay for our sins. The Apostle Paul wrote, God was pleased to bring all things back to himself. That's because of what Christ has done. God made peace through Christ's blood by his death on the cross. Jesus paid for 
every sin ever committed and every sin that would ever be committed. People would no longer have to be separated from God. And with God's help, people would make peace with one another. But the story of Easter doesn't end with Jesus' death on the cross. On the morning of the third day, Mary Magdalene went to Jesus' tomb to cover his body with spices. That's odd. Someone has rolled away the stone. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Mary Magdalene ah! ran to find Jesus' disciples. Peter and John returned with her, and in the tomb, they found linen cloths that were used to wrap Jesus' body. But they did not find Jesus. So they returned home, leaving Mary behind in the garden. I can't believe Jesus is gone. Hello, sir. Y you must be the gardener. Did you carry Jesus away? Tell me where you put him. Mary. Teacher. And as soon as the man spoke, Mary knew it was Jesus, alive. He had come back from the dead. Jesus is more powerful than sin. He's more powerful than death. And because of him, we can have peace with God and with each other, as God intended from the beginning. And that is the story of Easter. We should tell that story every year. We do. Awesome. It is awesome. Before Jesus, we had lost our connection with God. Our relationship was broken. Jesus' death and resurrection, it helped rebuild what was broken and reconnect us with our Creator. Amazing. Thanks, Kellen. No problem. Peace out. Oh, and happy Easter to everyone. Happy Easter. <laughs> Only one thing left to do now. Ooh, I was thinking the same thing. Oh. Huh. So, uh, was that supposed no. to- No! Reveal the question! Why does Easter matter? What do you say, Lawson? I guess it's really the reason we're here. It's true. Jesus' resurrection is the most amazing thing that has ever happened. That's why we can't stop talking about it. What do you think? Why does Easter matter? Talk about it together. We'll see you next week for a brand new show. Bye! Happy Easter. Happy rope. What are you going to do with all that? Make a fort. <laughs> oh, a rope fort. Yes. First of its kind. You can't come in. Huh. Why not? You don't have the password. The password's the rope. Oh, well now I can come in. Wow, what a great show today. I love Easter. Me too. I thought you were very good today. Yeah? Totally. And you look great too. Have you lost weight? I have. Thank you for noticing. No problem. I also noticed that we seem to be out of popsicles. Any idea where they might have all gone? Uh, what? I don't. Uh, how could that happen? I mean, I didn't. Uh, look over there. Oh, Lawson. question today is why does Easter matter and why are we calling this the best day ever? And it's because God loves you so much that He sent His only Son to die on the cross for you. And more importantly, we want you to have a relationship with Jesus. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We would love to talk to you about how you can have a relationship with Jesus. Go ahead and check out our activity pages that we have online on our app on uh, Mountain Ridge or online at Elevate Kids. Let's go ahead before we leave and see what memory verse we're working on for this month. It's found in Romans chapter 14, verse 19. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. 
Thanks again for joining us. Have a great Easter and we'll see you next time.